When it comes to nominations, though, that's quite a bit different. There are thousands of positions that the president is supposed to fill by nomination, uh, both in the executive branch and in the judicial branch. And it's often simply not worth the time of a congressional majority to spend several days letting cloture petitions ripen when you're talking about an assistant secretary of something, when you're talking about a district court judge. And so it's become possible for very, very small minorities of senators, as few as one person, to introduce enormous delays in the confirmations of officials by refusing to grant unanimous consent. Um, Senators tend to be very, very, very reluctant to hear those kind of prerogatives questioned, as do sort of veterans of working in the Senate. It's part of um, what makes the Senate unusual among legislative bodies around the world. Individual members have a great deal of sway and influence in a way that backbench members of the House of Representatives don't have, in a way that backbench state legislators don't have. And so there's a tendency to have a sort of a bipartisan agreement that it's, it's good to allow for these kind of holds and things like that. But I do think that Americans need to ask themselves whether you know, the interests of particular senators, and it's not the question of a minority or a majority at any given time, but are the interests of the country as a whole well served by this kind of process, or would it be better to make it um, simpler for the president to at least force a vote on all of his nominees in some kind of a, a timely manner? I think you especially see in the judicial context that there's been a, a downward spiral of sort of delays and making it harder to confirm people that's had a lot of different modalities to it. To some extent, filibusters. To some extent, the, the business about blue slips, which I, I'll, I'll defer to my colleagues as to uh, exactly how that works. But it, it goes back and forth, gets very contentious. But the equilibrium result is not to advantage Democrats or Republicans. Both sides have found it harder to get their judges confirmed. And so the end result of it is simply more judicial vacancies than you would otherwise have. Um, there's simply nothing you can do about the fact that the parties tend to alternate in power in, in our system of government. And, but by that same token, it's very difficult for any party to sort of unilaterally disarm. There's these enormous incentives to try to slow things down, keep the vacancies open until after the next election when the situation may be more favorable to you. But those exact same incentives apply always, 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 always. And so you're just getting a situation where you have fewer judges on the bench, you have fewer executive branch jobs filled with formal employees and more of them being done by sort of informal counselor types. And it doesn't really help anyone, I would say, over the longer term. 